Welcome to today's video, everybody. It's an exciting one because finally, the underbody in the back of the abandoned S15 is getting finished. Finally, like seriously, finally, I have, you have no idea. Cause we thought we finished it a long time ago. We then found out that what I put on due to a translation error and me not being able to read kanji was I put wax on, the underbody wax. So we had to strip all of that off. I bought a dry ice blaster to get it all off and everything and everything like that. And then uh, I got a welder. We welded up all the rust holes and all that kind of stuff that I found. It's, it's been a disaster. But the good news is, is we're already primed and ready to put our undercoat on now. And I'm so glad we did and went through all of the troubles that we did because it's led us up to this moment here. By the way, what do you think of my little paint booth here? We got a little fan that pushes fresh air in there. It all goes through here and it gets sucked straight out by that big massive fan up the top there. And it works amazing. We don't see any overspray coming off or out or anything. It's great. So. This is what we're dealing with here. We've got our nice bend pack lights on the ground and it lights up everything perfectly. Look at this, it's beautiful. I love it. So we've already primed everything. We've got that special um, like anti-rust zinc based primer. This is looking great. Everything's all done. And now we're pretty much ready. It's already like dried and good for us to start putting the undercoat on. So I'm gonna work on that and uh, get everything ready. But, oh man. I'm so excited, everything's done. By the way, um, this is all fixed now. There's no more big hole there. Nice piece welded in there. That piece was welded up. We've got a, uh, a, uh, a pinch weld there again. Welded everything in. Over here, we had two massive holes there. They're welded up, looking good. Everything's great. And there's no hole here. There's still some beads in there. Um, but I mean, uh, there's no point getting in there. I don't care that you can see weld beads in there. But yeah. That's it, she's all good, ready to rip. One thing I will show you guys really quickly is the pieces we cut out, cause it was bad. This is what it looked like on the inside. I'm so glad we cut all this out and fixed it. Look at it, from the outside it looked like that, but the inside was just destroyed. So once I was able to cut this out, I was able to get my wire wheel inside the fender in all these places and I had to cut more and more out because we just kept finding more and more in those sections. So it, it turned out being quite a large amount and you can see that this piece of steel, we cut a bunch off that so we could uh, patch her up. But she's all patched up and good to go. So now I'm gonna start painting and get the underbody on. All right, I don't know how well you can hear me, but I'm ready. And this time we've got the right stuff, which is apparently rubber chipping black. So we're gonna turn the fans on and start painting. All right, let's get this party started. Your boy done goofed up. I thought three cans of the rubber chipping black was gonna be enough for the underbody of the car and we came up short. So I've had to order some more. We did actually duck out to the home center and hope that they had some. They did not, um, so that was a waste of time, but I've ordered some more on Amazon. They'll be here either tomorrow or the day after. But for now, this is what it looks like. We definitely gonna need a couple more cans. We gotta do all of this still. And we've gotta do obviously like another kind of coat on everything. So I'm pretty much just gonna double down and order like another six cans and hope that that's enough. Cause I want this to be a nice thick coat. Um, it has been drying for a while and it's kind of like already safe to touch, but it just looks so good in this state. Like it looks amazing. It's the proper underbody stuff. Like 
Bedliner, I would say it's a little different than Bedliner. Bedliner definitely comes out chunkier, but this just looks OEM to me. It looks amazing, I love it. Looks so good. And it uh, hides like a little bit of your weld imperfections and all that kind of stuff as well, right? Really nice, so it's gonna come up great. And the best thing is, is it's all anti-corrosion stuff, so should do pretty well. I think that this car is gonna last as long as I need it to as a practice car, and that's what I'm excited about. Also, our makeshift paint booth worked an absolute treat. It was awesome. Had the fan blowing there, fresh air coming in, and it'll just blow all the fumes straight up and out this big boy fan here. This thing pulls serious air, it's actually crazy. We actually capped off the vents outside on all these fans, and this is the only one that's plugged in right now, and we turned it on, and as I worked, walked around to pull the cap off the outside, which was like a piece of, like a big square of plastic and alu aluminum tape, it had forced through air pressure that whole thing off and torn it. So it was kind of wild. Like an actual core flute sheet. Like the thick core flute sheet stuff. So it's definitely got some uh, pretty decent CFM. That aside, I figured considering we can't continue painting for today, I thought, why don't I get started on the subframe? Now, this subframe is awesome. It's a brand new one from Nissan, but before we slap it in there and start using it, I wanna make it better than OEM. And to do that, well, we need one of these GK Tech subframe reinforcement kits. These things are amazing. And I try to put them on all of my rear subframes because in an accident and stuff, these like stock ones, these bend and break all the time. On your toe arms as well, these bend too. Like it's, it just happens. So it's a really good idea while your subframe's out to weld their reinforcement kit in. And this is everything that it comes with. We've got another little baggie here, all the other pieces. So I'm gonna get started. I'm going to just place everything where it needs to be. And then I'm gonna like draw around it with a marker so I know where I need to grind and get metal on metal contact for the welds. And then we should be good. I'm a little bit worried about some of these bushes being in here, but we don't need to do full beads along the, along the way. We do only have to do like a couple tacks here and there and stuff. Obviously, um, we don't wanna just go tack, tack. We wanna go tack, 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 and tack like you want a couple things. But if I go nice and slow and don't put too much heat, I think these bushes should be fine. Because I would like to use the OEM ones. I'm not gonna switch them out for um, hardened ones, although I will run collars in the uh, main ones here. But yeah, we should be good. I have to show you my favorite welds because I think I finally figured out what I'm doing and that's kind of right here. It may have taken me a while, but I'm really proud of these because I figured out how to get my beads to not be so tall, kind of get them nice and flat and not sticking up as high where they need to be grinded down. Oh man, this is so hard to get into focus. There we go, that's better. Look at those. I'm not gonna even grind those up and clear, clean them up because they're nice and flat, those beads. That's perfect. I'm so hyped. So I'm gonna paint this side and we should be good. This side's already done. And then we gotta move on to like these little things and this thing here and stuff like that. But we're chipping away nice and slowly. These are kind of the big ones after that. They're kind of little ones, so we'll get it done. I've completely finished with the rear subframe now. Every piece is welded in. I've already painted everything, but I'm really, really proud of how my welds are starting to turn up. I didn't even have to grind these ones down. I'm starting to figure it out, and I just painted over them because I like it. The stitch welding actually looks good. I think I'm finally starting to get this now, guys. So I'm pretty hyped. Um, obviously, this material is a lot easier to weld than the body of a car, but still, like, 
from going from this side that I grinded down a bunch to then this side where I actually started getting the hang of it and just stitch welded it and painted over it. I think we're doing well. I think we're doing real well. But anyways, that's me for today. I'm beat and I'll probably pick this up tomorrow. It's the next day and everything arrived this morning and Daiki has already gone and finished painting the whole underside here. It looks incredible. I hope the camera does this justice, but it probably won't. But it looks amazing. It looks brand new. So we're gonna start assembling and getting the fuel tank ready to go in with the rear subframe and whatnot. Um, but even like the line here is just so perfect. It's great. We're obviously still gonna be doing a bed liner through the trans tunnel. We're gonna do that later. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm so happy with how this all turned out. All the rust repairs and everything. I think it's great. And I think this car's gonna last us a very long time. I'm really excited about it. It looks amazing. I don't think I've ever seen an air chassis so clean under there just because it's got fresh bed liner. It's awesome. I've got the fuel tank here, which we've gone and pressure washed and cleaned everything about it. I pulled the fuel pump out. We found out we got a really nice Nismo fuel pump there, which is great because we can use this as a pickup pump to then go into my Dishworks surge tank. And then that way we can then have some nice Dishworks pump in the surge tank. And this will be great for just a pickup pump. We don't have to change anything there, which is awesome. Um, and then here's the rear subframe. Yesterday, you guys saw me weld in the GK Tech reinforcement kit. That's obviously all done. The paint's all dry. It looks incredible and it's time to assemble this bad boy. We got some Nismo lower arms paired up with a full set of GK Tech rear arms for this thing. So these are their camber arms, their toe arms and their traction arms. And they've gone through a bunch of revisions, but I think now is obviously the best that they've ever had. Um, one thing that I love the most is that their rear toe arms are offset like this. See this bend? so that when your car squats, it doesn't hit the frame or the body. If we have a look at my S15, right, we have just a set of uh, Yashio factory ones, which are straight. And we put a fair bit of droop and squat into these cars. We just really like how it handles and feels. But I get under here and show you real quick. I'll show you what I mean. The toe arm actually smacks the body up there. Might be very hard to see, but this, will actually smack onto that there, to that part of the frame. You can see it's actually been hitting there sometimes. And that's pretty normal, it's pretty standard. Um, it's something that I think everyone who has an S chassis that lowers their car, and when your geometry changes like that, it kinda can mess things up. You can really see it's been touching on this side too. It might be hard to see on camera, but that's because the arm is dead set straight. But the best thing about the GK Tech ones is they offset it, so that um, it won't contact the body at all. And obviously when you're drifting and driving, if the tow arm hits the body and the frame, that will actually really drastically change how the rear end reacts and feels if it can't travel properly. So yeah, big kudos to GK Tech for doing this. It looks like they've really reinforced and beefed these up from the last time I had a set of these from a couple years ago. Yeah, it actually looks like they're using a much bigger um, pillow ball now, which I love that. That's awesome. Cool, so I'm gonna start assembling, putting all the bolts in. One thing as well, of course I have the GK Tech um, uh, lockout washers and bolts, and that's to replace the rotating alignment bolts that would normally go in here. So on a normal car, if you just have straight non-adjustable arms, you'd have this little washer in here that would rotate and change your alignment. But we're not using that because we have adjustable arms. So we're putting these bad boys in. One thing that I love about the GK Tech arms is that they come with their dust boots. Now these are totally optional. They don't actually install them, which I think is actually kind of a little annoying because I always put these on. So I'm always having to unscrew all of the um, pillow balls to then put these on, but it's very easy. It goes in like this, and then you just kind of stretch and pull it over. It can be a little fiddly, but there you go. That's how you get these bad boys on. I just find that you get a little bit longer life out of your pillow balls when these are on, because it stops like dust and dirt getting in there, but still, you need to check them from time to time and lube them up with some like silicone spray or lube or something in there. But yeah, that's that. Now I'm gonna put this all back together 
and onto the camber arm. I've already got the toe arm kind of in there and uh, I'll give you guys an update once I've got stuff assembled. So I hope you guys enjoyed your little bit of subframe content, but we are pretty much done with this. Uh, we obviously have to finish assembling the knuckle and getting the hub and everything on there for the drums and whatnot. But for now, everything's kind of hand tight and chilling there. So it should be easy for us to get everything done. Um, I also made sure, pro tip guys, get yourself some kind of anti-seize uh, to put on the nuts and bolts because these obviously always end up seizing at some point and whenever you wanna get them off, you don't want them stuck on there with rust. I use this, which is just like a thread compound. It's pretty similar to like an anti-seize. It really stops any water or dust or dirt or anything like that getting inside the threads and the nuts and whatnot and preventing them from uh, you know coming off as easy as we'd like them to. But yeah. That's it, subframes together, looks beautiful. I love all the GK Tech arms and pieces on here and the uh, little uh, solid washers here that stop with the eccentric washer, I think it's called, that rotates it and whatnot. So I won't have any issues of that. And yeah, it's just, it looks awesome. Black on black looks sick. <laughs> kind of sucks that the Nismo ones are silver, but hey, it's all good. We're good, looks great. And the reinforcement kit's awesome too. I do also just want to quickly add a massive thank you to GK Tech for sponsoring us all of these parts and jumping on board for the abandoned S15 project. It's obviously always a, pl a pleasure working with GK Tech and uh, I love their products. So it's really cool that uh, they made sure that we got everything we needed for the abandoned S15. With that guys, I think I'm kind of done. I am extremely exhausted. It's pretty late today and my Apple Watch is already dead, which means that it's definitely late. Um, but yeah, we got, we've been doing a lot of stuff on the side that you guys don't know about and I've also got a baby due soon So things are a bit hectic on that front, but we did get an accelerator pedal for the abandoned 32 Look at this bad boy chilling here bam, 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 bam. Got a cable for it as well and we also found two clutch pedals for 32s, which will be arriving next week. So we can put a clutch pedal back in this ready for a manual transmission. And I also got a manual brake pedal and clutch pedal for this. And we also, we managed to get a really special transmission for this car. I'm not entirely sure how this happened, but you guys are gonna love it. It's an RB25 transmission with a very specific gear set for it. So I'm pretty hyped and I think it's gonna make this car awesome. I don't know if we're gonna keep using that same transmission in this car though, because it'll make more sense that the transmission ends up going in this one until I can find like a normal stock RB25 transmission that's in good condition to throw in this or an RB21, because I really don't think this thing's gonna be making more than 300 horsepower. Um, so it'd be good to just keep an RB25 transmission in that stock one, no need for anything else, I think. Otherwise, Daiki's been really busy getting his car prepped for a practice session this weekend. They have uh, D1 Central on tomorrow and I think also on Sunday. So he's gonna be taking his car for a little bit of a test and he hasn't run a front sway bar in this before. So I gave him the old GK Tech one that came off the abandoned S15 and he's gonna test that and see what that's like. And the best thing about them is their massive clearance. So you can actually have a full angle kit on here. And look at this, full lock and it won't actually hit the sway bar whatsoever because you have these splines here and everything. So normally a stock one comes out way further and his wheel would be smashing on it. So yeah, that'll really help. And uh, I think uh, he's excited to test that out. I always run a sway bar actually in mine. And it feels great. You excited? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. What time? What time is it? It's 11.13 right now. I think one of my favorite things about having Daiki here is we've been friends for quite a while. I think, when did we meet Daiki? About three, three years. I think it may have been four years, but about three, four years ago. So like we've known each other for a while and we've been pretty good friends, but like being able to have him here and after hours, it's just pretty much like just two mates wrenching on each other's cars and helping each other out. And I think that's like super important. I hate the feeling of like, you know, employee boss kind of thing. Like I like just being able to hang out and work for my friends and being able to also pay them for us to work on cars and wrench together is an awesome privilege for not only myself, but I'm sure for him as well. But anyways, guys, I don't know what was with that tangent. That was weird, but I'm feeling good. 
and I have a kid on the way. So I need to talk to you guys later. I'm going to G it out of here. I'm a mess. I'm tired. I'm wrecked. I need sleep. But I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace out. Till <laughs> after.